AMD just announced their brand new Ryzen 7000 series chips at Computex 2022. We're going to talk about whether or not you should be waiting for these chips or if you should go ahead and buy something else right now. These CPUs do appear to be a good upgrade over the current Ryzen 5000 series CPUs. AMD mentioning things like having over 5.5 gigahertz clock speed, a 15% single thread uplift from the current generation, as well as all chips being featured with RDNA 2 graphics. If you want the full breakdown of what AMD announced at Computex, you can go watch our hot news video right over there. But we're gonna talk about whether or not you should be buying current generation CPUs or should you be waiting for this next gen from AMD. However, there are a few things that you should keep in mind that AMD didn't talk about that might sway your decision. We'll talk about the most important things later, but the two important things that you should know right now that AMD didn't talk about are release date and pricing. We have no idea Idea how much these chips are going to cost and the only ETA AMD gave us was this fall. So how long you have to wait for these chips is actually not determined right now. And considering when Ryzen 5000 came out, which was November of 2020, you might be waiting an entire another six months for these chips to come out. And the fact that AMD didn't mention pricing doesn't bode well either considering how much Ryzen 5000 series chips cost when they first came out. The 5600X launching for three hundred dollars was a hard pill to swallow at the time and all the other chips like the 5800 costing four hundred dollars etc down the line showed that AMD is willing to charge more to their consumers if they believe that they actually have the clear advantage over the competition so don't necessarily expect that these are going to be price to performance kings but what you don't have to wait for and does have great pricing right now is today's video sponsor drop they have their upgrade and quick save event going on this week and if you if you've ever wanted to pick up something from Drop, this might be the week to do it because tons of their best-selling products are on sale right now. Things like their Sennheiser HD58X Jubilee headphones that I've had for three, four years now are currently 20% off. Their gaming headsets like the Sennheiser PC38X currently going for 20% off as well. The control keyboard, 10% off. Their entry level mechanical keyboard, the Drop Enter is only $79 right now. And their PC37X headphones are only 99 bucks. Great audio quality, great microphone quality, but best of all, current availability and savings going on for Drop's gaming week right now. We have tons of stuff in the office from Drop, including the HD58Xs that we use to edit every single UFD tech video. The pricing on all of this is great. The event is going on until May 30th, so get it before this event runs out. Make sure you get your savings on Drop stuff, and big thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. And just like you don't have long to take advantage of Drop's sale, you also don't have long to take advantage of AM4. That's one of the main reasons that I could see that people would wait for Ryzen 7000. Buying anything, including a B550 or otherwise motherboard from AMD right now, won't last you very long. There is no upgrade path anymore. And in fact, the best platform to buy right now for longevity is actually Intel because the Z690 should support the next generation 13th gen chips. This is something we haven't been able to save for a while, but AMD has no longevity on their current platform. But that brings me to one of the things that AMD didn't mention in their event is the longevity of the AM5 platform. Dr. Lisa Su talked about how AM4 supported chips all the way back from 2017 and they have five years of support for AM4, but she did not mention a single time how long AM5 will actually support chips for, which was a main talking point when Ryzen first came out was the fact that you would not have to upgrade motherboards very often. The fact that AMD did not mention it is slightly concerning. They do have a good track record of supporting chips, but I wouldn't necessarily take that for granted, especially since they're not using it as a talking point when when it used to be. But since they dropped that talking point and are happy to raise prices on us when they actually believe they have an advantage, I wouldn't necessarily hold out that you might not have to do a motherboard swap every two to three years rather than five years. Another big reason why you might not want to wait is because the next generation requires a brand new setup on everything. You will need a brand new motherboard since it's a brand new socket. You will need a brand new CPU and you will need new RAM. DDR5 support is 
all that the next generation Ryzen chips will have. And considering the price of DDR5 is roughly double DDR4, you're looking at a very expensive upgrade in order to go to the Ryzen 7000. Even something like a Ryzen 5 7600X, if we assume current pricing, is gonna cost you $300 for the chip, $200 for the motherboard, and if you want something like 16 gigs of RAM, will be another $150 to $200. So you're looking at $700 minimum if you wanna keep other things like your graphics card, your power supply, and your case. You're really just upgrading the bare essentials. That will be a tough pill to swallow for many people. And that might actually make Intel a better upgrade solution in case you're looking for the best current gen option, considering the fact that 12th gen supports DDR4. If you wanna get something like the i5-12400, you don't need to shell out for that extra RAM in case you've purchased anything since 2015 when Skylake debuted. If you have any DDR4 RAM, it'll work on Intel's latest platform. Or if you wanna buy a 12th gen DDR4 motherboard, you can actually get some budget options like an $80 RAM kit that gives you DDR4, 3200 megahertz, and 16 gigabytes. Now, thankfully, AMD will not require you to upgrade your cooler for the next generation because AM4 coolers are actually supported on AM5. But that brings me to another point that AMD mentioned is that the chips might actually run really hot, especially considering the fact that AMD talked about that the AM5 socket supports 170 watts. You might require a beefier cooler for the next gen chips than you currently would right now. Because again, that's one more thing AMD didn't mention was IPC uplift on their chips. They only really hammered home clock speed increases with regards to the 15% better gaming performance that you could potentially get on Ryzen 7000. And considering they're saying that the highest chip supported will be 170 watts, it stands to reason that AMD is not bringing us much more architectural efficiency in Zen 4, but rather is focusing on actually increasing the clock speed and the power consumption in order to deliver all of the power. So getting a new cooler might be required even if it actually supports the same mounting hardware. AMD showed off the fact that the Ryzen 7000 chips can hit 5.5 gigahertz, which is all well and good, but if that is what accounts for all of the performance increase that you're seeing on the next gen chips, then it might not actually be beneficial for your cooling solution. But I think one of the most important things that should be taken away from what AMD brought out is the fact that the current options are actually still really well priced and buying AMD right now does make a ton of sense, even if there's no longevity on the platform. We don't know how long AM5 is gonna last, but with AM4 motherboards and AM4 CPUs, you're getting a really good deal right now. A B550 motherboard averages about $120. You can get B450 for cheaper and X570 costs roughly $180. We have no idea what the next generation motherboards are going to cost, but the CPUs right now from AMD are really well priced. Again, a 5600X is only going to cost you $200. So you're looking at $320 for getting the mainstream mid-tier version of what AMD has to offer. A 5800X is only $310. A 5900X is less than $400 right now. 12 cores, 24 four threads can handle essentially everything that you want. A 5950X is $550 right now. Everything that AMD has right now is super affordably priced. And unless you're rocking something like a 6950XT, you actually really don't need 15% better gaming performance because you're not probably bottlenecked by your CPU. If you're on something like a 6700XT or an RTX 3060 Ti, a 5600X is going to be great for you just because a 7600X is 15% faster doesn't mean that you're going to get 15% better gaming performance because your GPU is likely the bottleneck, especially if you're playing in resolutions like 1440p or 4K, even with the 6950XT, it stands to reason that you're actually not going to see all of the performance benefits that AMD is going to bring with the next generation. And also keep in mind that AMD just launched their 5800X3D for $400. It is currently sold out right now, so that's not as legitimate of an option when it comes to what you should get right now. But that brings us to another thing that AMD did not mention with Ryzen 7000, and that is 
3DV cache. They talked about clock speed with Ryzen 7000 and the fact that their L2 cache is doubled per core, but no 3D stacked cache, which is something that we've been waiting for and actually unlocked 15% faster gaming performance on the 5800X 3D versus the 5800X. In case you want that new technology, that might only be available in the 5800X 3D for the remainder of this year. AMD not mentioning 3D Vcache on the Ryzen 7000 seems to indicate that they're actually not moving forward with that on all of their mainstream chips, and that might be exclusive one-off chips that they're doing later on. So something like a 7800X 3D might only get announced in a year or so, and it might behoove you to actually pick up the 5800X 3D right now if you can find it available. It's a really tough conversation going on right now when it comes to CPUs. Intel is better than ever with their 12th gen. Their price to performance on things like the 12100 and 12400 really can't be beat. AMD can't be beat when it comes to buying something like a B450 for 80 bucks and picking up a 5600X for $200 and you getting a really good bang for buck mid-tier setup. And then AMD not mentioning how long they're gonna support the socket, what the price and release date availability is, and and whether or not 3D Vcache is gonna happen, or IPC improvements, it actually seems to me like Ryzen 7000 might be one of the weakest showings from AMD since Ryzen actually came out, which is unfortunate. And it might actually be better off for you to wait for Ryzen 8000, considering the fact that you will have to make the switch over to DDR5. Giving it another year or two for DDR5 prices to come down might actually be the smartest decision. Picking something up like the 5800X3D makes a lot of sense right now. And as I argued in the five reasons why you shouldn't buy the 5800X, 5900X 3D video, the 5900X is probably the best bang for buck chip you're gonna get. 12 cores, 24 threads, really fast gaming performance, all for under $400. AMD has brought consumers a ton of value since Ryzen debuted, but whether or not Ryzen 7000 is worth waiting for, I'm gonna say not. Either pick up 12th gen Intel or pick up current gen AMD because in order to upgrade, it's gonna be a really high barrier to entry. And unless you need to be on the bleeding edge, it's gonna cost you a pretty penny to just even stay relevant. But let me know your thoughts on this down below in the comments.